Okay, welcome to Significant Figures presented by Guy Daffini. So first things first is that significant figures only really apply to measurements uh, and they're all certain digits plus one estimated digit of a measurement. So the amount of specifics you have can only be dependent on really your measurement tool. So here's some examples from the class notes. So this could be read as four so this is the one you're certain as obviously four centimeters, but you can guess one more. So you would say like 4.5 and that would have two sig figs. Uh, and for B, uh, you can say for certain that it's 4.5, but then it looks like a little bit more. So you can guess one more and say 4.5, say like maybe one. So that would be three sig figs. And this one again, same thing as A, it's just going to be three, but you can guess one more digit and you'd say it's pretty much spot on. So you'd say it's 3.0 and that would be two sig figs. So that's kind of that stuff and now the four main rules to determine the number of sig figs in like numbers that are given to you which you kind of just assume their measurements uh the first one is that non-zero digits are always significant so since these are all non-zero digits this is going to have three significant figures uh the second rule is that all final zeros used after the decimal place are significant so 23.0 would have three 45,000 will only have two though, because these zeros are, which we'll talk about more for later, are only used for spacing the decimal. They're not used after the decimal point uh, with sig figs before. And 45.000, whatever, would have five sig figs because these three come after the decimal point. Uh, rule number three is that zeros between two other sig figs are always significant. So you see a number like this, all these zeros are between this number one and this number four. Uh, so these would all count as sig figs. So this would actually have 10 sig figs. And like I said before, zeros used solely for spacing the decimal point are not significant. So 0 0.005, these are solely used to space out this five away from the decimal point. So we only have one. And this 500 grams would also only have one because it only, yeah, these are just used to space this five away from the decimal point. So there you go. Uh, and some wacky exceptions. Uh, number one is when you're using proper scientific notation. So the number that is actually in scientific notation is between one and 10. All digits, including zeros, are significant. So you have a number between one and 10 uh, times 10 raised to a certain power. Uh, so this number here is always going to have, this number here is basically going to, every single digit is going to be significant no matter what, as long as it's in proper scientific notation. So, uh, and the second, uh, exception is a bar over a zero or a decimal point uh, can make zero significant. So for example, as we remember before, this 500 without this decimal point was only one sig fig because of this, and these were used to space the decimal point. But if you were to put a decimal point here, that would basically indicate that you were able to, that the measurement was basically, you were certain to a specific point and then you guess like this point, for example. So it would basically give you three sig figs. And if you have like a bar, it does the same thing over a certain thing, it'll give you three. And then um, if you had a bar over the second zero, it'd only be two because it gives you, uh, it makes everything significant. That's basically above, below and to the left of the bar. So, yep. Yeah. All right, so the third exception is that sig figs are not considered in numbers that are counted. So for example, uh, like five people in class would be considered zero sig figs and 10 copies of Mr. Seglin's Life Story written by the Dominic Fontana from the class of 2024 would also have zero sig figs because these numbers are counted. Uh, and the final exception is that numbers that come from definitions have an infinite number of significant figures because they're kind of like infinitely accurate or whatever. So we don't really consider these or these um, or exception three. So for example, 100 centimeters in a meter would actually have like infinite sig figs. So we just don't count this or we don't count three when considering uh, sig figs and everything. So now uh, sig figs and calculations, again, these only apply to measurements because that's kind of how sig figs works. So for rounding, you're gonna wanna identify the last sig fig in the number. And if the next digit is less than five, then you don't round up the last significant figure. Or if the last significant figure is greater than or equal to five, then you're gonna round or if the number coming after the last significant figure, sorry, is greater than or equal to five, then you round up that last significant figure. So it's just like regular rounding, like how you would do like, I don't know, in like a regular math class, you just look to the number to the uh, right or the next number uh, next to the final significant figure to determine whether you round that uh, significant figure or not. And then 
In multiplication division, the smallest number of sig figs in the measurements determines the number of sig figs in the final answer. So and a good tip for this is like you're going to perform all the necessary calculations, which we'll see later, and then round the final answer based off of this rounding thing or just rounding in general to the number of sig figs as indicated above right here. So we'll see these all later in examples. And then in addition to subtraction, the number of small, the number with the smallest number of decimal places after the decimal point determines the amount of decimal places in your final answer. So you're considering decimal places instead of sig figs. So again, perform all necessary calculations and then round your final answer based off of like everything of the given numbers. And we'll see all this in examples. Uh, and just some things to remember, the scientific notation calculations all use the same rules as above in terms of sig figs, but you just have to make sure that you apply the rules for scientific notation when you're like multiplying them and adding them, which are in a different section of the notes. Uh, you always want to make sure that you're working with the proper units and working with them like how you're supposed to, which I'll, we will see that more later. Uh, and do all calculations first and then round at the end accordingly based off of the least significant number or I guess any other rules like the decimal point rule with addition and subtraction. And then the best thing to do with these is honestly just practice. So I don't know if Mr. Seculin gave you the packet this year of like all those sig fig practice things, but those are like really helpful to do and just practicing is really going to help you the most with this stuff. So, so here's some examples of just saying uh, how many sig figs each of these numbers have. So uh, pause the video and practice and kind of just try to get through these and then I'll quickly explain them and why they have the number of sig figs that they actually do have. Okay, so this first number has three sig figs because every single digit is significant. Uh, this number is going to have one, two, three, four, five sig figs. This number, these are only used to space the decimal points, so they don't matter. So they only have one, two, three sig figs. This number here will only have one sig fig because these zeros don't really matter. Uh, that's a one. And then this number will actually have one, two, three, four, five sig figs because of this decimal point. And these are significant because they come after the decimal point. And this is in between these two sig figs. So they all kind of count. Uh, and then this number, one, two, three, four, five again, because again, this comes after the decimal point with all these sig figs here. So that's why these are why, uh, that's why these are the sig figs that they are. So, all right, so now uh, perform the following calculations considering sig figs. So do the calculations and then round your final answer based off of the sig fig rules that we talked with before. And the unit thing that I was talking about earlier is like, you know, if this is centimeter squared, make sure this is also in centimeters. So when you divide this out, it just gives you centimeters. And make sure these are both in meters. So when you multiply them, it gives you meters squared. And uh, yeah, all that good stuff. Okay, so first, for the first one, you're going to do 82.5. Sorry, you're going to do 82.5 plus 13.56. And then you're going to get some number, but you have to round to one decimal place because it's addition. So you got to use the addition rule. So you get 91. 96.1 centimeters, make sure these are both in centimeters before you add them. So consider all those unit things. Uh, for B, you do these two added together, you round, you get 20.5 based off of this. Uh, for the next one, you do 54.00, take away 30.2020, and then you round accordingly. And then you get this guy, making sure these are both in grams, obviously, both in meters. Uh, for D, you're going to do 8.4 times 3.58, making sure these are both in centimeters, so you get centimeters cubed, and you have two sig figs here. Uh, and that's the least significant number. So you have two sig figs in your final answer once you multiply these, and that's how you round it. Uh, for E, you have one, two, three sig figs here, and only two sig figs here. So since it's multiplication, you round to the least significant number. So that'd be two sig figs. So you do the math, and you get this guy, and then you round to these two sig figs. Make sure these are both the meters, so you get meters squared. Uh, and finally, for F, you do 3.45000 centimeters squared. Make sure this these units line up so that you get centimeters when you divide. Uh, you divide it by 450. This has one, two, three, four, five sig figs. 450 only has two. So you do this divided by this, and you round to only two sig figs because it's division. And you get 0 0.0077 centimeters. So um, again, make sure your units are always, you know, uniform and that everything's good. Make sure you do the full calculation first and then round accordingly based off of the sig fig rule uh, for the particular problem. And uh, yeah. And again, uh, it's always good to just keep practicing harder ones because especially in this slideshow, I couldn't really cover you know, like multi-step problems or when the units are weird or like scientific notation stuff. This is just like a really bare bones thing that I hope helped you a little bit and kind of getting kickstarted. So you always need to practice. You need to look at your notes. You need to make sure that you know you kind of got everything that's a little bit harder down. So I really recommend practicing the harder ones on uh, level two on the sig fig practice sheet if Mr. Second still gives that out. And other than that, I really hope this helped a little bit and I wish you luck.
Thank you.